Continuing with our antiderivatives, this next group right here are all antiderivatives of, or connected to antiderivatives of the derivatives that we already know. Okay, so let's hit these and then let's look at some more examples. e to the x. What's the antiderivative of e to the x? Well, we know that e to the x derives to itself, so the antiderivative of e to the x will be e to the x, and of course we need our arbitrary constant sine x. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. What derives to sine, though? Well, cosine derives to the opposite of sine, but we don't have the opposite sine here. So therefore, sine will derive to the opposite of cosine. Right? And again, if we derive this, the derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine, but there's already a negative sign, so the two negatives make the positive that we're looking for. This one's not as bad. What's the antiderivative of cosine? What function derives the cosine? That's right, sine does. So this is going to cause some confusion. And this is where you really want to know your derivatives and your antiderivatives. Because the derivative of sine is cosine. But the antiderivative of sine is the opposite of cosine. Same thing. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. But the antiderivative of cosine is sine. You have to be able to distinguish between the two. The other trig functions aren't as bad. Secant squared, we know, is the derivative of tangent, so therefore the antiderivative of secant squared will be tangent. Cosecant squared, remember that was the derivative of cotangent, however, it derivative of cotangent is actually negative cosecant squared. So in the same manner that the negative sign is missing from up here, the negative sign is missing right here, we need a negative sign to counterbalance that. Secant derived to secant times tangent, so the antiderivative of secant times tangent will be secant plus c. And then cosecant and cotangent, that's our cosecant function. But once again, just like cotangent and cosine, this one needs to be negative since the derivative of cosecant is actually cosecant times cotangent, but it's negative. We don't have that negative sign, so the negative counterbalances it. All right, so we've got those seven antiderivatives to memorize, but let's put them all into action here. If we look at this next example, we have 4 over x to the seventh. Now, in regards to fractions, nothing's going on here. That's a, something with u substitution. How do we write this so that there's no longer a fraction? Yeah, we know that this becomes 4x to the negative seventh. An exponent, which was positive, becomes negative when we move it into the numerator. Now, just because the exponent is negative, doesn't mean we can't use our x to the n rule. All right, the only one that can't be done is x to the negative one. This is x to the negative seven. So even though we have negative exponents, we're still good. All right, so what happens? Well, the four is a coefficient, so it's part of our answer. And then we're gonna add one to negative seven. Be careful, what's negative seven plus one? That's right, it's negative six. A lot of students want to write negative eight. Okay, but negative seven plus one is negative six. And then we divide by that new exponent as well. And of course, plus c. Not only do exponents not have to be positive only, right? they could be negative, but they also could be rational. Right? I'm going to try and keep everything on the screen here. All right, we have the cube root of x. There's nothing over here for cube roots, but we know that the cube root of x is the same thing as x to the one-third power. So therefore, we can anti-derive x to the one-third. Again, it's okay that it's a fraction. We're going to add one to it, all right? So this becomes x to the four-thirds, and we're going to divide by four-thirds, but it's still good. We're still using our reverse power rule right there. One-third plus one is four-thirds. You can write one and a third, but it's best to stay away from mixed numbers. Improper fractions are the way to go. Don't want to forget our plus c. Also, just keep in mind that if we're dividing by four-thirds, that's the same thing as multiplying by three-quarters. So if this was a multiple-choice question, it's quite possible you could see that as an answer as well. All right, how do we do these next couple of problems? I'm actually going to, this one needs a little bit of work. We're going to rewrite this one for starters. We still have our 2e to the x, okay, and we know that e to the x will anti-derive to e to the x. Okay, so 2 is a coefficient, so we know that that's still, that's not a problem at all. 
it's this other part right here, this 3 over 4x. What do we do with that? Well, can you see how the 3 quarters is a coefficient? We're doing 3 quarters times 1 over x. Right? So what we can do is, in the same manner that we can move the 2 out front of e to the x, we can move the 3 quarters out front of the second part, leaving us with 1 over x dx. Okay? We can move our coefficients out front. We learned this with our definite integral properties a few weeks ago. Okay? So coefficients can travel outside, and then the remaining function stays on the inside. e to the x, anti-derives to e to the x. The 2 is still there, so we have 2 e to the x. And then we have 3 quarters, because that's still there. But 1 over x, well, we know from the previous video that it's antiderivative is the natural log of the absolute value of x. So we're going to have 3 quarters, then natural log, absolute value of x, and then plus c. And last but not least, we can do a quick trig one. All right, we have 3 times sine of x. Well, sine we see goes to negative cosine. Now just be careful because some students want to, when they antiderive this, I'm going to write the the wrong version right here. They say, oh, the 3 stays, and then sine goes to negative cosine x when I antiderive it. But look how that's written. Now, the student meant to write 3 times negative cosine x, but it looks like it's 3 minus cosine x. So we've got to make sure that we either A, put parentheses around that negative cosine x, or even better, put the negative sign in front of the 3. Now we, oops, I'm going to cosine here. There we go. Now we have the correct looking antiderivative. And then here, th x to the 3 fourths, so that's going to become x to the 7 fourths, because 3 fourths plus 4 fourths is 7 fourths, divided by 7 fourths. And then yes, we still need our plus c. So there's a few more examples to get you going when we're doing the antiderivative. What we're going to look at next is how do we figure out what the value of c is.